Good evening, everyone. This is Mr. Taylor with Young Engineers Today. I hope everyone is having a wonderful Wednesday. All right, let's get moving. If you can hear me, raise your hand. All right, we got Alex, John Mark, Jesse Keller, Marissa, Max. And Noah and Seth. Awesome. Majority of people, put your hands down. All right. If you can see my screen, raise your hand. Jesse, Catherine, Maya, Jean Marc, Alex, Henry, Jean Marc, Marissa, Noah, Seth. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. All right, everyone. Um, we had to cancel on Monday due to some uh, technical problems and some scheduling issues. Apologize uh, if you have not seen that on Edmodo. We will be adding a makeup session uh, in May, so you will be getting that day back. Um, there was just some uh, confusion there and some conflict um, out of that made it difficult. Uh, furthermore, uh, if you are in Charlotte, you have a lab tomorrow, so um, we'll see you at 445, so make sure to be there. All right, so uh, no problem. Um, we will be making up, so it's not like you're going to lose any time. You will have that time back. Now, um, just a few review questions. I know last Wednesday, no, you don't need to uh, have your pie with you, Sean Mark. You're fine. Uh, last Wednesday... Uh, you had a f substitute uh, on using Game Maker. Can someone update me? Because I've talked with Mr. Dubik about what went on, and I just want to hear from you guys any thoughts or where we left off, if I can just have some input, and then we'll move forward. Okay? Um, yes, go ahead, Marissa. Um, well, I can you hear me? Yes, Marissa, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, I can okay. hear you. Um, so, um, so I just went over what you went over uh, last Monday. Okay. Um, and then then she started like having us get our sprites and stuff, and what I like I I don't. I couldn't access any of the sprites that were actually on Game Maker, so what I did is I went on Google and then I, uh, down like, kind of like downloaded some of the. Okay. And stuff that we needed from there. Okay. All, but we had just like finished getting our sprites. Okay. All right. So we we didn't get there that far. So we'll review that a little bit and then dig deeper tonight. Okay. Thank you for your help. Yes. Yeah. All right. Let um, me hear from Catherine. Has her hand up? Go ahead, Catherine. <laughs> Catherine, go ahead. Catherine, you're unmuted. All right, we're getting no um, connect um, voice from you, Catherine. So uh, type in what you want to say or try logging out and logging back in. All right. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So tonight, what we're gonna uh, we'll just go in the game maker. We're gonna start practicing some things and working on that. Uh, if everyone can understand that, raise their hand. What we're gonna do this evening. All right. Awesome. I'm happy to be back, and we're gonna learn a lot tonight and over the next few weeks about game Mac game maker. Um, hope everyone enjoys it. It's a pretty cool software, and just like anything, I hope you guys take it further than we can even imagine, and you get to do some cool stuff. Okay? All right. All right. Um, as you went over some vocabulary, you have sprites, which are images, objects, and image with attributes that can act, think about interactions 
And the reason we say interactions and relationships because you'll be developing how things act and react with other things. You have events um, that occur in the game, actions, program, responses to events. So if you this touches this, what is going to take place? And we have rooms that are environments, and then we have no sounds, which are noises, music, etc. Okay. Um, Jean-Marc added that he's making iPhone apps with it, which is really awesome. All right. Now, we last time I know that I met with you, we just experimented for a little bit and we shared. All right. Now, creating a sprite, just a review. When you uh, create a sprite, uh, you click on the red face and you can load different sprites from that. Uh, okay. Now, when you oh, when you are using a sprite, um, you're going to name it. And when you name your sprite, and you can load the sprite from here, as Marissa stated, you can upload images from online, which is a really cool feature to do. Uh, and this will help you use images that are not on yours. Uh, but can someone tell me, why should we name the sprite? Can someone raise their hand and tell me that? Let's go with Jesse. Hey, Jesse. Uh, so it's easier to remember? Exactly. Easy to remember, great organizations. Thank you, Jesse. When you start creating um, games or other devices in this, uh, or functions, it it's going to build on itself and you're going to have more and more there and it starts getting confusing. If you think back to scratch it all, if I just have Sprite 1, Sprite 2, Sprite 3, Sprite 4, which is which? Now, if I name them things, it becomes easier to understand. Okay. Thank you, Jesse, and also Marissa for raising your hand as well. Now, um, I'm going to believe that you already, with um, on Wednesday of the last week, Raise your hand if you already had time to experiment with making sprites. Raise your hand if you did that. Okay, Jean-Marc, Noah, very good, Maya. Okay. So you did last class, all right. Um, Jean-Marc. Huh? Jean-Marc, this is me. Um, so last, on Wednesday, you guys actually experimented with making sprites? Um, yes, but I've made sprites before because I've used this. Okay, I know you're, you, you actually own a copy of this and you're, you're the man with the plan here. Um, yeah, we did experiment with them. Okay, I just want to clarify so I'm not wasting anyone's time. All right. Thank you, Jean-Marc, for your help. Okay. Uh, so, sprite review. Uh, sprites are pictures, they're single images, uh, they're visual representations of game objects, any common drawing format you can, that you can be able to use here, okay? So, uh, as Marissa explained, you can upload images off, download them from Google, um, I mean, you can turn yourself into a sprite, because you can use JPEGs. So you can take a picture, and be like, cheers, it's me, and upload your own image okay uh, and you can make uh, a lot of things here okay now what I want you to do is click on the blue ball it might not be blue for you all right and we're gonna uh, create learn how to create objects all right now when you do that objects can be either visible or solid why do you uh, what do you think this means? Why would you want it to be either solid, a solid object, or either a visible object? Anyone want to take a share with that? And before um, I call on someone to answer that question, Catherine, all you've missed, we went over... Sprites, reviewed that, and then we're on objects, which is like the blue ball. It's a ball shape, okay? And when you have that, you can either make them 
visible or solid? And I'm going to call on Jean-Marc this time. Yes, Jean-Marc. Um, visible it means it. Like seen, if you don't want it, if you don't want it to be seen, like if you make a wall visible for things to bounce off of. Yes. It you do not want solid or visible. Okay. If you like making a floor or something that's seen, like the player, then you have to make it. You have to make it um, visible and solid because it'll react to those. Yeah, it kind of uh, reminds me of some of the Mario-type games. It helps me remember this, where you have some of the secret passages or um, some secret, like, game-ups or stars where you jump on something and it appears type deal. Yeah. So you don't want to see it. So if you want to have, like, special secret options or things to interact with it or even a booby trap, uh, that's mm -hmm. something you could have. That's... a uh, and then solid as you, a great example if you wanted someone to walk across something. Very good. Thank you, Jean-Marc. Yeah, you have, right. have to set it to make it walk across things. things. If you like making a platform game, but pretty, pretty much, much if you want it solid, it's a wall. Okay. Thank you, Jean-Marc. Um, Jesse, go ahead. You'd like to add on to that? Jesse? Um, if you can make it, you can make it. Okay. Great, Jesse. Thank you for participating. And Catherine, go ahead. Um, am I muted? You're on muted. Come on down. Okay. Well, well, I just want to make it. Is my voice bouncing back? Say that one more time. Is my voice always bouncing back? Because I can't really understand what I'm saying. You're a little. You're a little echoey. Yeah, okay. okay. I'm, I'm just wondering. Okay, so so if it's solid, that means then you can, like, stand on it and everything. But if it's just visible, then you can have to. You can, like, go through it. Uh, basically, you can see it or you can't see it. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah but, but if it's, it's not, not solid. Um, then you can go through it. Yeah. Um, you want to either have something that it's more of from a visual standpoint, if you want it to interact visually, like as a game, where there's things that are there that if you might not be able to see because of whatever game design you're creating, then you don't want to see it, but you can still possibly interact with it. As a, It's more from the visual aspect for the game player. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just. All right. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yes, Marissa. So, I'm a game, game maker, and uh, I like I don't know how to to get like uh, <laughs> um. Marissa, you're breaking up. Can you repeat that one more time? Because you're breaking up a little bit there. I don't know how to get this sprite that I downloaded on my computer to Game Maker. You're going to have to, uh, you know, file pass. You're going to either have to, um, when you open it up, when you let me go back here. When you um, when you want to load a sprite, you're gonna have to find out where it's at and like click through your folders. Yeah, I, I, I know I know I know where it's at. It just doesn't give me that option to access it. Okay, then do go then do it this way. Um, go from your computer and put the file into Game Maker on your computer and where sprites would be. So then you can access it that way. Can you repeat that? Cause yeah, your, your, your internet connection is kind of rough right now. Um, 
how strong are you at using or like doing back shortcuts through uh, using a PC? Like, do you understand file folders and everything? Not strong. Um, but basically, what you're gonna have to do is then try moving the folder or moving the image to a location that your um, game maker can access. What we can do is, can you stay on for like 10 extra minutes tonight? Yeah. And I'll work with you and I'll see your screen, okay? Okay. Okay, okay. thank you, Marissa. Jean-Marc. Um, I think I know what might be With Marissa? She, did she, Here, I'm gonna unmute. Yeah, she, Give me one minute. Let me unmute her. Marissa, Jean Marc, you're unmuted. Are you Are picking you load sprite that? whenever you try to load it in? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Have, Have you tried, tried just opening the folder and dragging it straight into the to like, like the sprites, sprites folder, folder on, on Game Maker? Game Maker. No. Try that because I know that works on the newer version. I'm not sure about the old version, but okay, that was it. That's what I was trying to explain. You did that much better than I did. Thank you, Jean Marc. You explained that way better than I did. You're welcome. Okay, all right. Um, okay. So, let me move on, I'll get back to where we were. Now, what I want you to do is take about five minutes um, and experiment. And let me put the D there. And take about five minutes and experiment with objects, okay? Just go through, see what you can do, and We'll come back to it, okay? If you understand what I want you to do right now, raise your hand. Okay, very good. All right, go ahead. Yes, Henry. Henry, you're unmuted. Excuse me? Okay. Um, I already made my own game. What do I do now? Make another game? Okay. And then I'll let you share the game you made at the end of class. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Katie? What happened Monday? Um, we went over at the beginning of class. We just had some issues that um, that were out of our control. So what we we're going to do is reschedule uh, the class. So what we're going to do is reschedule the class. All right. Yes, Catherine. Well, I don't really remember how to load my sprites into my sprite section because if you want me to experiment, I have to make a new game. Hello? You need to drag and drop the image into the sprite folder within Game Maker. Okay. Well, that's not really working. Because the image is on my desktop 
and I'm on a Mac. Okay, so go into your system files, open up Game Maker, and try to drag that in. If that does not work, try dragging it directly um, into the sprite folder on the side. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. It's not working. Um, did you click on load? Where's load? Under the sprite. We're on objects now, Catherine. We moved on. So what you're looking at is for objects. I'm going to have to go back about five slides. Um, you're going to have to click on load sprite and place... When you load that sprite, try to find the location of it through your through your file. Well, how do you load the sprite? Because I'm on the object page right now. Then you're gonna have to go to the sprite page by clicking on the sprite icon. Oh, okay. And I think it might be the microphone that makes everybody echoey. Excuse me. I think, I think maybe, maybe it's something with your microphone that makes us all echoey. Let me say, I haven't had, you're the only one who's making it echoey. And you're fine now. Okay. okay. Yeah, I think you're having a connection issue. And once you log in and logged out and it stabilized itself, it's, you're fine now. All right, yeah, because I still, I still hear everybody echoey. That, that might be on your end, okay? But I got okay. some people. I got to call on. Thanks. Yes, Zach? Um, I just I got, got here, here. And, and um, last week, week Mr. Duke was trying to look, look for, um, what's it called? Something to help, because my, um, I was it wasn't letting me import things. Uh, I need. I don't understand what you're talking about. Like, like on, on Game Maker, Maker it wasn't letting like me import, import sprite. sprite. All right, you had. Did you? Tr are you on a Mac or a PC? First off, PC. All right, uh, PC. Try dragging and dropping whatever image you download into the uh, sprite folder. Okay. Okay. Otherwise, if you click on load sprite, try to change the file folder, like directory, and just click through and try to find where your images are at. Okay. Uh, if that doesn't work, um, literally try to just drag it right on to your sprites folder and drop it right in. Okay. Okay. okay there's a handful of things that you can try there. All right. Thank you. Yes, Marissa. Wait, well, I figured out how to get um the, the things, the sprites, the bomb, the apple, the banana, the cherry. Okay. All. all right. Do you want to show everyone since you came to this epiphany? What? Do you want to show people or you want to explain it? What do you, what do you want to explain? explain? I'm not, not sure. sure. How you found it. Oh. So you can put it in words that another someone of your age would understand. Um, all, all I all I did was when I, I went to Google, I downloaded it, and then I I found it in my files. That it was under documents, and then I moved them. I moved those files to desktop, and that um, Haymaker can't access desktop. It cannot. It, you're it, you're breaking up really bad. Are you saying can or cannot? So I don't want you to confuse anyone. Game maker cannot access from documents. Yes, you need to put them on your desktop. Yeah. Make sure they're on your desktop. Yeah, because the reason uh, documents it's looking for uh, different file settings. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Marissa. Oh, and I also, wanted, I also wanted to say, like, how do you create an object? You click on the bluish ball object, and and we're going to go into objects a little, 
And when you create it, um, you have names, et cetera, but we're going to be going into that more in the future. Okay. I'm just letting you guys experiment a little bit right now. Okay. Basically what it does is it allows objects to like, it basically allows your images, which are your sprites to perform actions. Does that make sense? So you like attach a sprite with an object, and then that object, you, we can set up different movements with it. Does that answer your question, Marissa? Uh, kind of. Okay, but the thing is, I don't want to get people confused because there's a whole set process of what we're going to do here. Okay? okay? Okay. All right, everyone, bring it back. All right, now, what we're going to look at now is I want you to click on the white looking square where my cursor is. This allows us um, to create a room. Okay. All right, that's how we would go in and we can create rooms. Okay, and we'll get into that a lot more. Basically, the room is what your player is gonna see Um, you can end up having multiple rooms for like the tip, depending on the game you create. This will allow you to change the background, the settings, which objects you want to take place within the room. Um, and remember objects are your sprites that are able to move. All right. Now, um, that's how we create a room. Now, when you are your room, uh, you can end up organizing, set up in different ways. Now, if you look, look for the like the little image that looks almost like mountains, mountains uh, allow us to set up backgrounds. And our backgrounds give us the opportunity to put different things behind it. Okay. Um, now, uh, backgrounds are pretty cool because you can end up loading images in that... You can edit the background and do different things to it and make some cool visuals for what you want your game to look like. Okay. And that's another uh, cool function there. All right. Now, if you click on the speaker looking object, right? Right now, if you haven't noticed, all we're kind of doing is going over some very, and I mean, very basic aspects of this. Uh, so you can either load your own sounds on there, use some pre-made sounds, uh, depending on the version you have. The thing that's pretty cool about that is you can make some funky noises. You can have like any type of game that has like a constant playing background music, etc. You can also add music to specific, um, sprites and objects okay so when you have those objects uh, objects are pretty powerful because they just sprites allow you to make what your image is objects give it the ability to attach movements think about it from a um, scratch point of view in scratch if all if all i did was ever just pick the pictures i want then that's all it would be. But all the code is basically what the objects are, okay? Another way of looking at it. All right.
and there's um, different sounds that you have the options to do. Okay. Now, uh, you can test the sound in music sample by using the green play button near the loaded fo uh, file name and the stop sign will stop the sample. So if you want to hear what a sound looks like, not what it looks like, what it sounds like, to have a better idea how that will work. Um, because sometimes you look at a sound and might the name of it might be deceiving or not be what you had in mind. So you want to test it out. It's kind of like a ringtone sample. All right. Does uh, anyone have any questions as of right now before we start moving forward? And we're going to make a game and start working on that game. Yes, Catherine. Go ahead, Catherine. Um, so when I try to get my sound, I can't really go sound off the original game maker. Okay. Then because I'm on a Mac, and that's the same thing with the pictures. I mean, the sprite. Yeah, it's an issue with the Mac. Uh, it just doesn't play nice. So what you have to do is, um, when we get to sounds, you can just load sounds. Uh, How do you do that? The same way you would load an image uh, from your desk. Okay. You you could use any sounds on on Earth. You can get them off the internet. There are websites that you can download a variety of different sound files. You could use anything in your iTunes account. Uh, you have iTunes? Um, not me. Okay, you have iTunes on your computer? You have a Mac, correct? Yeah, yeah I, I should. should. Yeah. yeah, you could use an MP3 file. Uh -huh. okay. So there's a lot of options out there that you can use. So you just got to... Um, and John Mark has his hand raised. So I'm going to leave you unmuted, Catherine. Yes, John Mark. Um, a good place to get sounds is this website called Sound Archive. Will you send it to me, and I'll send it out to everyone. Okay. And ladies and gentlemen, um, you will. I'm going to post a bunch of sound files and image websites that you can check out when uh, just to help you guys out. Those will be up later tonight. Okay. Is that, Catherine, does that help as well? Yeah. yeah. And Mr. Oh. Taylor, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go log out again, again and then come back in. So yeah. when I type in, can you send me, send it to me again? Because yeah. I still hear everybody else echoing, not, not not you, but everybody else and me. Okay. I don't think that's a problem because I hear everybody echoing too. Right now, there are two people on muted, Catherine, so don't worry about that. No, but I hear everybody echoing. Uh, don't stress about it. I'd rather you <laughs> stay in class and just turn your volume down a little bit, all right? Because yeah. I want to make sure you're getting everything you can out of that. Okay? okay. All right, everybody. Thank you. All right. As soon as John Mark sends me that file, I'll send that out to you. Uh, does anyone else have any questions, comments? Um, I know we went over just some basics. Basically, what we're going to be doing here. All right, Jesse has his hand up. Go ahead, Jesse. Say that one more time, please. Walls? Yeah. You would have to make a, a sprite that you would want to be able to see and then create objects to attach to it. Okay. Um, but we're going to be making a game. Basically, you're going to learn how to do a lot more through actually doing. Does that make sense? You're yeah. going to learn how to use different processes. I just did an overview on some where, so you would know where things are at related to what we're going to be using during the game that we're going to create. Okay? Okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. So there is a good one. Sound Bible. Um, 
all of you can check that out. All right. Thank you to Sean Mark. And ladies and gentlemen, if you find a great site for sounds that you use or images, um, Google Images is pretty good. I mean, you can find a lot of random stuff there as well. One of the negative sides of things. But post it on Edmoda. That's all I'm going to be doing is posting a few on there tonight so that you, it can help you guys out. All right? And if we work together, we'll uh, gain more out of it. All right. We're going to make a new game. Okay? Uh, we will call it Fruit Collection. All right? So what I want you to do is go up to the File tab and create a new game. Once you have done that and created a brand new game, fresh, clean slate. Yes, John Mark. Um, we already did this in the last class. You made the whole game? Are you... um, we made, we um, created the file and made the sprites and did a, a few of the objects. Okay. All right. Um, so we did that. We did after the wall. All right. Um, so we did the apple. Tell me when to stop on this. Um, you, you're, you went too far. We haven't gotten it to any coding yet. All right. So you only went two slides in. Okay. All right. So I'll just review. All right. With that. Thank you, Jean-Marc. All right. So how about this instead? Please open your file. Does that make more sense, Jean-Marc? Yes. Okay. Open your file called Fruit Collision. Okay. Thank you, Jean-Marc. All right. So last class... You created this file, and then you created a cherry, strawberry, banana, a wall, and a bomb. All right. Um, who here, raise your hand if you have not done this yet. Raise your hand if you have not made this yet. Okay. All right, Zach. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, did any of my suggestions help? Yes. yes. Okay. So can you go ahead and do this then? Uh-huh. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, let's go with Keller. Keller, what difficulties are you having here, sir? Um, hello? Hello. Keller, what, yes. what, what problems are you having? Uh, I just, I don't know. You, Keller, I need you to speak up so I can help you, sir. Are you not able to create these or you cannot find the files? You don't have images? I'm unable to create them. Okay. What, what, can you talk me through what you're doing? Keller, I need you to explain it. Explain it to me, so I can help you. All right, um, that Geller, best suggestion I can ha give you is make sure that whatever documents, that it's not attached to your documents. When you go to your sprite to create a new sprite, uh, and you try to load that sprite, make sure you're naming it. And when you load it, um, please make sure it's not labeled. You can download a wall image or et cetera, um, but you're going to need to not be able you can't have anything attached to documents. 
documents to your documents. All right, uh, it's the best I can do to help you out because you're not giving me anything to work with, Keller. All right. Maya, go ahead and make a wall. Okay. For example, in this image, I guess you used this last class. Here's a wall. Okay, so you made that that image, so you have these sprites. All right. Now, I know. Now, on every one of these, all right, we're going to make objects now. All right. We're going to create a wall object. And it will need to be visible. And it will need to be solid. Okay. So you can you're gonna um, click on those. So for your wall, we want the wall to be visible and solid. And when you do this, okay, you need to make sure you. Um, Take the sprite, because right now I don't have a sprite there, and you're going to choose from your list of sprites and load that sprite. So what will end up happening is that you'll end up with your sprite, object sprite, or excuse me, it'll look like it'll be an object wall, which will be pretty sure it'll be OBJ uh, underscore wall, one of being the name of it, okay? All right, so you'll have that selection from those sprites. And you'll have to do that um, for this wall. Okay? You want it to be visible and solid. Yes, Henry? Uh, I think I just found it, but I'm not sure. Um, to, um, to move according to the mouse, do, can you use, don't you add event, um, keyboard, and then add whatever mouse? Well, mouse, whatever tier. Yeah, what mouse then, clicks you want to use. Okay. And then you um, move fixed to a certain, whichever direction you. Yes, with the mouse. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, Henry. Okay, Catherine? Um, so I have made it un vi visible and solid. Yes, and you and you loaded it upright. You picked here, loaded your sprites, and you want the wall sprite to be. I just chose it. Okay, that yeah, exactly. Whatever, that's a better word. Chosen. That works. Yeah. Um, but does that make sense? Because your sprite is just an image. Am I explaining that well enough? Yeah. Now the object is basically going to put the strings on the puppet. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. I apologize if my wording isn't very clear at times, but thank you for oh, your help. Okay. All right. Now, all right. So we have it visible. Now, we're going to create the Apple object. All right. The Apple object will be need to be solid. All right. So we, as we said, we want the wall to be visible. All right. Okay. Uh, I might have read that wrong. Okay. In Apple, your wall will need to be visible. Your Apple will need to be solid. Okay. So we have the wall and the Apple. Wall is visible. Apple is solid. And now we're going to do an Apple action. Yes, Marissa. Um, so I was wondering, on the wall object, on the wall object, does it need to be visible and solid or just visible? No, that's my fault. I I read it wrong. I said it wrong too. Just make it uh, the wall object just needs to be visible. Uh, you can easily just you just click on the object file folder, click on it, and you can change it. It's an easy fix. 
that's one of the beauties of Game Maker. You can just click on things and change it really quickly. All right, Marissa. Um, I was also wondering. I was also wondering. What like do? You, what do you press to change? How would you? What do you press to change that insert object or? Uh, change what? Uh. Like the, so I put visible and Okay, just click, you see the object folder? Yeah. Click on the object folder. If you open it up, you'll see all your, you'll see your wall object. Click on it. And you can change it again. Um, do I right click or left click? Just double click. Natural, like a natural click. Like, I guess that would be, uh, sorry, I'm on a uh, mouse square. So, uh, be a right click, or excuse me, left click. So, I'm clicking on wall object and nothing is coming up. So, right click on it. It, it gives me five options. Go up to sprite and click on your wall. Uh, it gives me five options. That, that's, uh, when I click on Sprite, it gives me five options too. Alright. should just be able to click on it and have it open. There Do you have the object folder open? You opened that already, correct? Yeah. And you should have it, and you see the OBJ underscore wall? Yeah. And you've double clicked that? Yeah. And it didn't open? Wait, hang on. It, it just, it, it, my, maybe my computer was just being slow or something. It okay. just opened. Okay. Sorry, that was. Okay. I know that was a little confusing. <laughs> no, that's fine. It's just one of those things where it's where you're like, okay, this is the way you do this, and then you do it, and then it doesn't do it, so you start questioning yourself. You're like, well, wait a minute, am I doing that wrong now? And then it's like, no, I have to be right. <laughs> I know. Like, that was one of those things. I, I started questioning myself for a moment there, which is never good. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Marissa. All right. Catherine? Um... I didn't raise my hand. Okay. I left it up. Sorry. Okay. Then that explains it. Thank you. All right. So now, what we are going to do now, we're going to click on Add Event. All right. So, we're going to add an event. All right. And when we add an event, we're going to click Create. All right. So once again, just walking my way through this, we're going to click on Add Event. After you click on Add Event, you're going to click on create and you'll have one small window that will open up there and you will now choose from the top mouse control and click drag and drop it into the action areas match the arrow controls with the image below okay No, you once again I'll read this. You will now choose from the top mouse control. And as you can see, if we go back, we're gonna hit create. And the top mouse control, drag and drop it into the actions area. Match the arrow controls with the image below. 
So basically what I did is I used all the arrows around here so that it can move in any of those directions in the speed of eight. There's a moment to do that. I'll walk through that one more time. And if you're wondering where Ad Event is, it's right here in the events area down below. That's the Ad Event. And then the area where you're going to drop in the actions is right here on the action section. Okay. And then what will happen is you'll get a list of events in the events section. Basically, this is like your coding aspect, if you will. You're going to be assigning movements and different things to your images, all right? And let me go through this one more time. I'm gonna call it, hit add event. This choose an event to add will pop up. We're gonna click on create. And then you will now choose from the top mouse control and drag and drop in the actions area, top mouse control, all right? And then you will use the moved Match the arrow control with the image below. All right. Yes, Marissa. Um. So I have I so I clicked on create, but no popped up. So I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Uh, can you please repeat that? Half your sentence just broke up. Uh, yeah, I don't know what it is. It's my, I, I don't know if it's my internet connection or, but, and my internet connection is really strong right now. Yeah, I'm, I, I don't know. I just, you're the only one I'm having a lot of difficulty understanding right now. Sorry. No, it's not your fault. No, I don't um, want you to take it but personally. Anyway. Oh, uh, so, um, my, like, I clicked on create. I clicked on create, and, um, it, like, it, the, the screen, the, I, I'm, like, looking at your screen right now, and I, I am not seeing the thing. Okay, um, Marissa, can you type in your what your what you need because you're like every other phrase you're saying is breaking up, so I'm not getting the full understanding of what you're saying. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying. Thanks, Catherine, for the suggestion. And Marissa, if you can see this button, this image right here, I don't know if that helps. I don't. I think that's what you're asking. Can you still hear me? Yes. It's just you can keep talking, but okay, uh, on your screen, I'm not seeing the move. Fix the button. Yeah, okay, press the run the game button. It just shows a blank screen. 
I clicked on the create button. If I think and I know what you're it didn't asking. pop up the movie ticket. All right, I'm going to answer your question the best I think you're what you're asking based off of what I'm the information I'm getting. Um, Are you getting this screen? Marissa, are you getting this screen? Yes. Okay, good. And you clicked on create. And then you should get yeah. a list of like, what are you getting now? Uh, it just took me back to the uh, object properties thing. Um, Okay. And it didn't give me anything. Like, it just shows the thing create now in my events. Okay. Okay. Look here. I think I know what you're asking, but I'm not 100%. So let's let's look at this. Okay. I believe you're – It's see this button right here? You need to grab this yes. and drag it into actions. Like if you leave your mouse on it, let it hover over it, or you, you'll see top mouse control. Grab that and drag it into actions. I got it. All right, good. So I, uh -huh. I, I right clicked on it. I right clicked on that red. Okay. Now you should end up with this screen when you open it up. Yeah. Okay, you good now? I think so. What am I supposed to press? It's right here on the screen. Uh, you want to match the arrows with the image in here below with the speed of eight. Okay. Okay? All right? Okay. Yep. Okay. I'm glad we were able to fix that. I'm just sorry that it's just breaking up. Uh, that probably have been a lot quicker. All right. Okay. Now, I think we're all there. Okay. Now we're gonna um. That we just cr we are creating an apple collision. Now, you're gonna click on add event. We're still under the apple. All right. So under the apple, what you're going to do is uh, provide you with the following screen. Uh, next, click on collision. All right. And we're going to, uh, when you click on collision, what we want it to do is interact with our wall now. Okay. So we click on wall. All right. And when you click on collision, select the wall object. All right. And we'll, we're, since it's 6 o'clock, we're going to stop there. What this will do is allow your game to physically interact with the, the wall. So when the apple interacts with it, It'll, um, we're setting up that connection, and we're going to build upon that next class by um, – all right. And then next class, I'm just looking ahead. I don't want you doing this right now. We're going to add a mouse movement and allow it to do some bouncing, all right, and – it's going to bounce around. So your apple is going to move around in different directions, okay?
And now what I want you to realize is that this add event is important. We'll work our way uh, and adding a score and then we're going to create, go to the room. We're going to create room parameters and different things. And we're going to create a background. We're going to add sounds and music. We're going to go through all the banana and the strawberry, the cherry, and the bomb. And then this will take time. But in the long run, this is kind of like what it's going to look like. Okay. And, and we'll try to play it towards the end, okay? Just looking ahead for you. All right. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Marissa, never apologize when you're trying to learn, okay? <laughs> Catherine said it, it'll spray when it hits the wall, okay? Uh, Maya, you don't need to bring your pie tomorrow. Remember, we got to finish Gyrobot. Okay? All right, remember, lab tomorrow. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you for your patience, working together. Um, any other questions? Yes, Seth. Oh, never mind. I was just going to ask. I forgot to put my hand down. I was just about to ask if we had a lab tomorrow. We have a lab tomorrow. All right, do you feel better about everything now? Yeah. Is this starting to make sense? Yes. Okay, good. All right, everyone. All right, Marissa, if you're still here, if you need help, let me know. Anyone have any other questions? It's 6.05, here to help. All right, everyone, have a wonderful night. Um, take care. Thank you for being part of Young Engineers today. Bye, everyone.